This is Rabbit Hole Recap, episode 300. 300 episodes, sir. I just muted you by accident. Oh, you missed an epic an epic <laughs> intro. 300 episodes, dude. Insane run. This is RHR. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn, did the stream cut? And then I realized I pressed the mute button. Yeah. 300 episodes. That's fucking insane. I can't believe we found it. That's over. It's probably around 600 hours of content, give or take. We've had three hour episodes. We've had, this will be an hour episode. We got a tight hour for a 300th episode today, freaks. But every week, man, can't miss a week. We cannot. Well, we Coming to you on a Friday. Matt was traveling yesterday. Yeah. That's so. why it's a trip. Thank you, Marty, for being flexible. <laughs> You know, it's a good way to end the week. And it, yesterday was a special day in our family. Without doxing anything. It was actually convenient that, that we pushed it to Friday. Because I was, oh, able, awesome. I was uh, able to take a half day and uh, be with my family. So it was good. Fuck yeah. Um, yeah. A lot going on. Dude, yeah, less, than tw- less than 1,200 blocks from the, the next... Block reward subsidy having. Block subsidy having. Excuse me. Less than a week away. Or about exactly a week away. Should happen. Either Friday night next week or early Saturday morning. Depending on how quickly or slowly blocks come in between now and then. Um, As you can see here, we're at block height 838,898. Which means we are 1,002 blocks away from the having it's gonna be like friday midnight our time right uh east coast yeah our uh-huh. time our time and i'm uh i'm traveling i'll be traveling next week to new york we got an event on thursday and then i'm gonna stay to celebrate the having at pub key so i might be at pub key late night when the having happens midnight midnight having celebration yeah it's gonna be like uh like an hour and a half for the last block it's like a, be like you know, <laughs> waiting. That would be the best troll if uh, if a mining operation just took a bunch of hash rate off at block height eight hundred thirty nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine. What happens if like the inscriptors are like doing like they like are doing like reorg shenanigans around it to get that block? Yeah, I don't know. What's the likelihood of that? Have there been many reorg shenanigans? I don't know, but this is like the first. I, I have no idea. I mean, Bitcoin will be fine. It just could. It could get a little interesting there. Yeah. I assume, I assume that like the inscriptor people are like very excited about being in that block and having that block. No, that's a very good point. Is it a special block? It is for them for sure. <clears throat> yeah, I, I have to read up. Charlie Spears is uh, him and uh, Will Foxley dropped an episode about apparently there's a lot of sniping going on. So like 30% of the fee market recently has been driven by this fee sniping that the ordinals or people taking advantage of the ordinal situation have been participating in. So it seems like a little bit of MEV coming to Bitcoin. Not going to pretend to be an expert on that at all. I need to read up, watch up on it. What was that? I said, don't really understand it. Yeah. But like with the BR20s and stuff, I don't know. That's it. Like, I think supposedly there's a couple shitcoin projects that are launching like on the having, right? Yeah, I think that runes project. Yeah. Second layer. (laughs) Such a boomer about it. I have no fucking idea. Well, anyway, Are we the baddies? Like sets. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with that, we got a tight hour. Let's get the Clark's dashboard. Current price of Bitcoin is $68,210. One cuck buck's going to get you 1,466 sats. We're at a $1.34 trillion market cap. 
as I mentioned earlier, we're at block height 838,898, 1,002 blocks away from the block subsidy having. And so for anybody who's unaware, a lot of misconceptions. I'm a semantics whore sometimes. Everybody's like, the block reward's going to get cut in half. It's not true. The reward, the reward, the block reward that is issued to miners per block is made up of two parts, the subsidy, which is predetermined by the network and the transaction fees in that block. And so the subsidy part, which is 6.25 Bitcoin per block right now, gets cut in half at block 840,000 to 3.125 Bitcoin per block. Big event in Bitcoin happening next week, Friday, early Saturday morning. Um, so that's going to affect the profitability of miners unless the price of Bitcoin runs dramatically over the next seven days. So that'll be something to pay attention to. Um, with that in mind, there will not be a difficulty retarget before the halving. The next retarget is 1,774 blocks away, estimated to be on April 24th, 2024. Right now, it's looking like a negative 9.6% adjustment. Blocks been coming in at 11 minutes and four seconds since the last uh, difficulty retarget, which happened a couple of days ago, and that was an upwards adjustment of 3.9%. So we're still a bit early into this difficulty epoch. So that negative 9.6% is likely to change. And the halving throws it off a little bit. Yeah. Or a lot of uh, it. Yeah. There are currently 84, 85,019 transactions in Clark's mempool. If we go over to mempool.space, we will see that there are... Mempools are hot. 195,584 transactions. V market going up. Um, if you have a high priority transaction, the fee that you're going to need to attach to that is 155 sats per V byte. Medium priority, 115 sats per V byte. And low priority, 9 sats per V byte. If you I mean, don't put... really. it's 92 sats per byte, and you're in the next block, probably. What was that? If I'm looking at it correctly, it's like 92 sats per byte and you're in the next block, probably. What are you looking at? I'm seeing 155. I'm looking above it at the actual. Oh, at the actual. Yeah. Yeah, last block, the range of transaction fees associated that were accepted was 69 sats per V-byte and 327 sats per V-byte. Black, black. Black to the dashboard. Back to the dashboard. Samurai Whirlpool, unspent capacity. Number go up, approaching 11,000 Bitcoin. Currently standing at 10,923.68 Bitcoin in unspent capacity. That is 745.1 million cuck bucks in unspent value. That is the state of the network. This is pretty clean. I mean, we're ending this, this subsidy epoch on an even episode number, 300. I mean, probably not. We're probably going to have one more RHR. Oh, that's true. Dang it. We got to figure that out. Unless we skip next week. I don't think that's going to happen. It may be next Friday too, though, because I do have something to do Thursday. So just like this epoch was the end of RHR. No no RHRs after the happening. We named it The Show Must Go On. So The Show (laughs) Must Go On. Wouldn't that be a great last episode title? (laughs) <laughs> the show must go on. You just end the show right after. I'm it's pretty. Open. Crazy. It's pretty crazy that we're sitting at all time highs into the having. We've never seen that before. No. Like Maybe right not. now, it'd be like peak mining death spiral fud. Where's our, what's Ari Paul saying these days? I haven't seen him on my feed. Is he, Does he still exist? Is he uh, spiral fudding right now? Death spiral fudding. I don't think you can death spiral FUD during uh, all-time highs. It was really good engagement last cycle. Yeah. I want to give a shout-out to everybody attending BitBlock Boom up in Dallas, Texas. I'm sorry I couldn't make it. It was a group of uh, of Bitcoiners who left to get paying up from the commons yesterday. It looks like a lot of fun. OG Bitcoin Conference, high signal. 
And uh, cheat codes going on uh, McCormick's Bedford uh, conference. Yes. Yeah. Congrats Bed- to him too. The Bedford Corn Exchange. Bedford got uh, the Bed- Bedford um, Real Bedford got a big capital injection from the Winklevoss twins. $4.5 million invested into the club. Come and become part owners. Did the Gemini earn people get paid yet? I think they did in whole. That's... I think they got their interest too. So I think they were. I think they're getting made whole in Bitcoin terms too. That that's what it was, right? Not interest, right? It was in, it, the negotiation was Bitcoin terms. Like yeah. they're getting paid in kind. Yes, which is well, the FTX creditors like are getting paid based on the U.S. dollar value in November twenty two, which was like fifteen k Bitcoin, sixteen k Bitcoin, or something. Yes. Uh, we have Philip Rizzo in the YouTube chat. Uh, number one, shame on you for being on YouTube and not the zap.stream chat, Philip. And you're saying I have low energy today. I must have been eating seed oils. Could it be further from the truth? I'm not low energy. I'm a little tired. I got to get a workout in. I was getting sun and steel outside a couple of hours ago. Got a steam. And I'm I'm relaxed. Not low energy. But if you want me to pick up the energy, I can, Philip. Yeah, you have to go to the Nostra stream and zap, and then Marty's energy goes up. RHR.TV. Yeah. Yes. Remember, the uh, the offer's still on the table. 10 million sats of of zaps on zap.stream, and I'll take off my shirt. You heard it here first, freaks. <laughs> um, I see Sir Sleepy in the Nostra comments. Um, it is pretty cool. Bit Black Boom this year has like a whole Nostra track, which is awesome to see. Yeah. And I love that it's back in Dallas at the OG Dallas Addison location. Where it should be. Where it should be. Oh. Lobby. Where does... LobbyCon has returned. LobbyCon. Some fond memories there. Bitblock Boom 20... Was it 2020 or 2021? We threw the conferences like, fuck it. We're doing it live. In the middle of the COVID lockdowns. It must have been 2020, right? I think so. Yeah, it was, I think it was 2020. Because he never, he didn't skip a year there. It had to be 2020 because they lo- started locking down everything April 2020. Yeah. And remember, it was like it was in Texas, and that's when like the media was like, people are dying in the streets. They're dropping dead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was funny because I remember 2021, COVID was still a thing, and uh. My brother went and wound up getting COVID after. It's funny. We shared a hotel room that weekend. I didn't get COVID. Yeah, yeah, no one got COVID the 2020 one when everyone was freaking out. And then 2021, it just like <laughs> ran through the event. <laughs> we got cocky. Yeah. All right. Let's jump into the list. First up, the Kingdom of Bhutan has announced that they are going to expand their mining operations capacity to 600 megawatts as the having looms for those who forget the story of Bhutan getting into Bitcoin mining. They did it, I believe in 2020 or 2021. Uh, and the only reason that we know that they're in mining is because, uh, Druck holdings and investments, which is, uh, Bhutan's investment arm got caught up in the block fine Celsius, uh, bankruptcy proceedings and so all that data became public and people saw that drug holding and investments was on these bankruptcy claims and uh, they sort of got exposed as being exposed to bitcoin and with that they leaned into it they said yes we were into bitcoin not only did we get caught up in these bankruptcy proceedings but we've been mining bitcoin too we have a lot of hydroelectric capacity in our country that's not being utilized and so They've been mining Bitcoin for about four years now, and now they're doubling down. They have a partnership with BitDeer, uh, which builds infrastructure and has close ties to Bitmain. And so they announced earlier this week that they're going to be expanding their mining operations to help offset the revenue impact of the Bitcoin block subsidy having, which is happening next week. So this is good to see. And I mean, we mentioned this a year ago when the news dropped that Bhutan was in the game, 
the thesis that Bitcoin will be adopted by smaller countries who are looking for asymmetric upside from an economic perspective will be the first to get in. Um, Bhutan, very small country, up in the Himalayas, is in Bitcoin, and they're doubling down. They hat hat tip to them. I think they're doing doing it the right way. They have a ton of excess energy capacity. Why not utilize that to turn it into the best money that the world has ever seen? Yeah, I mean, like with so many things we see in Bitcoin, it's the challengers that usually adopt it first. Um, yeah. And I mean, I expect many, many countries to have it as part of their strategy relatively soon. Yeah, I think we're going to see a lot of announcements on the back half of this year. It is pretty, it's pretty crazy that uh, they they got doxxed on the creditor list of BlockFi and Celsius. Isn't it? Um, Staying on this nation state mining tip, Paraguay reconsiders a mining ban in favor of selling excess energy to Bitcoin miners. So Paraguay announced, I believe a couple of weeks ago, that they were going to prevent mining operations from operating um, within their borders. I believe Paraguay has a ton of excess hydroelectric power as well in Bitcoin miners. I believe BitFarms has a big presence in Paraguay. Yes, they do. Complete 180. Yes, they did a complete 180. Well, shout out to the politicians within the Paraguayan government who stood up and said, hey, we are selling this electricity. We have a ton of excess and uh, we're not utilizing it. And then we're also selling our power to Brazil and other countries, um, which doesn't make us as strong here in Paraguay within our own border. And so politicians stood up. They could get more money for it if they just mine Bitcoin with it. Yes. Um, Why so sell it? Can... They don't even have to believe in Bitcoin. They can sell the Bitcoin if they want. They'll still make more money. Yes. So this was a bill that was proposed, and um, the politicians stood up, and today it was announced that they approved a declaration whereby the Senate of Paraguay supports local and foreign investments and in infrastructure and urges the Ministry of Industry to study the economic advantages of selling our surplus energy to the crypto mining energy uh, mining industry excuse me um, so a public hearing to debate pros and cons on bitcoin mining in paraguay is said to be held on april 23rd so it'll be a week from monday is that correct yeah um and yeah i mean this highlights one of the problems that exist if you're a large mining company deciding were to actually plop down your your operations and mine Bitcoin, geopolitical risk comes into play. Um, Biff Farms, as I mentioned, has made a significant investment in Paraguay. So they are exposed to the ramifications of this bill if it does pass. I hope it doesn't. Luckily, it seems like people are standing up against it. And I think... The marathon cool is there too. Pretty big, right? Uh, I'm not sure about Marathon. They may be. Um, but we've seen this historically throughout Bitcoin's history. Hydro Quebec, most famously, up in Canada, had hundreds of megawatts of excess capacity that was being utilized by the Bitcoin mining industry in 2015 and 2016. And for some reason or another, they decided to levy a discriminatory tax on mining operations, which made it completely unprofitable. And they were forced out of Hydro Quebec. And Hydro Quebec still has that excess capacity that they're not utilizing. And that was an example of something that was really boneheaded. And I think that was, I don't think Canada stepped in, the local government stepped in and levied this discriminatory tax. But um, at, uh, at, at the end of the day, it led to no tax revenue because everybody left. It looks like Mar- Marathon's in Paraguay, but they only have 0.2 X hash there. Yes. It's a small subset of their operations. Yeah, Bit Farms has more skin in the game down there. There you go. And here's some numbers: banning Bitcoin could cost Paraguay more than two hundred million dollars a year, assuming the country has five hundred megawatts of legal miners paying five cents per kilowatt hour and operating expenses. That's a it's a pretty penny, twenty percent of a billion dollars in lost tax re- tax revenue. As we know, all these countries can use tax revenue because they're all going broke. 
So be aware of that. We'll be paying attention. Look forward to the debate that happens in the Paraguay Senate on April 23rd. I did not see this, so I'll let you take this. A database containing personal information of 5.1 million Salvadoran citizens leaked. It's just everything. It's everything. everything. It's the Equifax everything. hack of El Salvador. Of all the citizens of El Salvador, it's like photos, date of birth, addresses, full names, legit everything. And originally it was for sale, but I guess uh, the Salvadoran government didn't pay the ransomware. Pay the so now it's for free as punishment. But yeah, well, this I is do. identification numbers. This is why, you know, you don't collect this information in the first place because if you do it's going to probably be leaked eventually you have to at least assume you have to assume it's going to get leaked eventually and it, it becomes a national security risk you know i mean i think you can make really strong individual privacy arguments for why this information shouldn't be collected but from a government point of view um you're you're literally putting your country at risk you're putting national security interests uh at risk yeah. and obviously the El Salvador is not alone in this. Uh, the American government and many other governments around the world collect immense amount of information on uh, their own citizens. I think right before we went live, so, um, so. Yeah. they amended the bill. I was not but able to. It's an expansion, isn't it, of the existing? It's like Patriot Act 2.0? Yes. It got um, passed, so now it goes to the Senate. It was an amended bill, though. I think Massey and others stood up and said, this is crazy. You got to fix this. And I don't know what the amendments to that bill were, but. My understanding. We, is we can assume it's bad. Yeah, assume, assume it's bad. It's like an expansion pitched as a reform. Yeah. Many such cases. Late stage fiat economy. Flailing. Dying empire type shit. I'm sorry. I'm just doing trying to find something on this. I can't really find anything good on the CISA stuff. Yeah, I mean, it just happened. It happened like 30 minutes ago. The house passed it. So I'm sure we'll find out more before the next rip. Yeah, and this is so... I followed this loosely and it's something that typically happens here in the United States is you have somebody who will campaign and market themselves as somebody who wants to defend freedom. The house majority leader, Mike Johnson was one of those individuals. And as soon as they get into a position of power, they completely, they completely revert course. And when it comes to people that get put in these positions of power, that have access to uh, sensitive information, they typically come out and say, I thought this before, but now that I have seen the information, uh, I, I've changed my mind. Yeah. Yes, I've changed my mind. We need to enact these rules. Believe me, it's very scary, the information that's been shared to me. And Rep Massey had a good tweet I'm looking for right now, which is basically like, hey, I've been on these things. And... Oh, it's FISA. That's why I couldn't find it. Um, it's a FISA bill, not CISA. Uh, and he's basically like, hey, I've been in these meetings and the information they share with you is opaque and it's a bunch of warnings that never come to fruition. And so it's all bullshit. These people don't care about you or your freedom. They're not here to save you. And also, 100%. And then also, um, I mean, specifically, this is supposed to target non-Americans uh, without a warrant. Not that that makes it any better but uh they routinely use it to to target americans i mean that that's what snowden yep. pilot is uh it's saying no we can only spy on non-americans and then they found loopholes and they're spying on americans i can't find this massy tweet but it's out there next week next week this is not good. So Mike Schmidt from Brink came out earlier this week and announced that uh, the Bitcoin core 
dev event that was held in Atlanta last year has been subpoenaed by the FBI. Uh, two years if, ago. Oh, two years ago. It was in 2022. I think the F, and this is in relation to Luke Dash, Dasher's um, Bitcoin being stolen and essentially FBI uh, wants information on everybody that's at this core dev event to see if any of them were involved in the theft of, of Luke's Bitcoin. They subpoenaed uh, the conference uh, organizers last year. There was a one-year gag period where they couldn't mention anything about it. The gag period has, uh, has ended, and so Mike Schmidt immediately took to Twitter and GitHub um, to make everybody aware that the FBI is seeking this information. He emailed all attendees, and then it got out, I believe. Yes. Yeah. So as part of the inf inf investigation in Luke Dasher's announced theft of his bitcoins and received a subpoena from the fbi wanting information about attendees of the october 2022 court dev atlanta event in the days before tabconf 2022 he was legally advised to cooperate um according to schmidt the request involved all developers invited to the event as well as some guests the provided information includes developers github usernames public first and last names schmidt la later clarified that those were taken from the public sources such as GitHub or the mailing list and email addresses. There's also an order from the FBI not to disclose the subpoena for a period of one year, which just expired. Doesn't have any details about the investigation or whether the subpoena was due to a targeted suspect or general information gathering as a part of the investigation. I apologize for this breach of your private information. Please email me if you have any questions, added the organizer. Yeah, I think Mike... I agree with Peter Todd in this tweet in the uh, No Bullshit Bitcoin blog post about this. That I think Mike handled this as well as he could have. There's really not much you can do in the FBI. It's putting pressure on you, but it does beg the question, is this um, core dev event seen as an opportunist? Like, is the FBI just being opportunistic? Like, uh, we have the opportunity to find out a lot about these Bitcoin core developers. Yeah, I mean, it's not great. But maybe Luke thinks one of the, I would like, there's, I'm not going to speculate, but we'll see. We'll see if more information comes out. Yeah. Yeah. Very shitty. Especially in, uh, an industry that's very privacy focused. All right. We've got an announcement from OpenSats that'll let you take. Pablo, I haven't seen you in the comments, but this is about you. What is Pablo in the comments? I said I haven't seen him. Oh, OpenSats announced uh, its first Noster based long term support grant for Pablo. Um, which is awesome to see. The dude's fucking prolific. He's working on many different projects. Um, recently launched Highlighter, Wikifredia, NDK, Nostra Development Kit. Um, the list just goes on and on and on. Um, so I think it's uh, it's just really great to see. It is. Should we be contributing to, to developers, open source developers? <laughs> you want to talk about it now? <laughs> I think it's a good segue. I mean, I would probably, we have to obviously talk about it. Um, look, uh, there's been a lot of controversy this week and a lot of discussion and uh, drama, to say the least. Um, <laughs> look at the comments, finally. Um, for the last three years or so, uh, me and many other people have been focused on supporting developers as much as possible. Um, you know, this movement rides or dies based on contributions from open source contributors around the world. Most of the time they're doing it for free. Um, most of the time um, they're not getting much support financially or otherwise, and they're doing it just because they're mission aligned. And, uh, and, and we rely on them. We rely on them and it's, it's, it's absolutely, uh, 
necessary that we support them as much as possible. Um, I think a lot of people think that there's been massive progress on that front and there has been, but it's been a very slow, arduous, uh, uphill, uh, grind to get any kind of support for these developers. Um, and there has been really good progress and that's really great to see. Um, but there's also been, uh, I guess the way, the way I would phrase it is we, first of all, I would say that, you know, maybe I could have handled this better. Um, and uh, take responsibility for that. Um, it did kind of turn into a complete shit show and, uh, I don't love drama in general. And some people might find that hard to believe. Um, but it came to my attention in about in January um, that Sailor was basically uh, petitioning people not to support open source contributors. Um, and a lot of this was happening behind closed doors. Um, there's been many, many private conversations that have happened since January. Uh, and I thought it was imperative uh, that it was made public and that these conversations enter the open discussion square and that people actually can have open discussions about them. Um, I think, you know, Michael got into Bitcoin in spring of 2020, in July 2020, and he absolutely has balls of steel. And it's been amazing that he's been able to accumulate such a large Bitcoin position. Um, one of the largest Bitcoin positions in the world, both from his company and presumably individually, um, through a, a, some might say, a very intense bear market. He stacked through the whole bear market, and that's incredibly impressive. But he's, it also comes with the fact that he's become very, very influential, um, both among the influencer class of, of Bitcoiners and among the financial class of Bitcoiners, the new entrants to Bitcoin, uh, the Wall Street types and whatnot. Um, and, uh, it's, it, it's disappointing. It's, it's disappointing to see, uh, active encouragement from someone so influential, um, to not support open source contributors. And I would say that, uh, more support, the better, uh, this is definitely not open SAS specific. I would like to see as many organizations as possible funding uh, Bitcoin developers. I would like to see people funding Bitcoin developers directly. Uh, I think NAS is really promising in terms of people zapping uh, developers that they rely on directly. I want to see more Bitcoin education, dev education. I think Nifty is doing a fantastic job with that, with her Bitcoin plus plus and base 58 and just training the new core of developers. I would say that, uh, there's been a lot of, you know, soft fork talk and all this stuff, but I personally have always been very conservative when it comes to Bitcoin development, particularly on uh, in consensus uh, situations. And more of the focus should be on maintenance and actually building out the robust software layer around Bitcoin. Um, and I just want to thank all the open source contributors who, you know, consistently tired, you know, or they're tired. There's a lot of apathy out there. There's a lot of exhaustion. A lot of people are burnt out. Um, I'm very burnt out myself. And uh, I'm just going to try and support you as much as possible. Yeah. Like all things that we discussed on our show, there's a lot of nuance and I completely agree with what you just said on the maintenance versus consensus changes. I think we've learned on this show as two individuals who have championed soft forks, which have been implemented into Bitcoin and had um, some effects on what you could do with the protocol that were unforeseen um, and the highlights that it is probably better to err on the side of extreme conservatism versus move fast and break things and merge as much into the protocol as possible. And Sailor was on Stefan Levera's podcast a couple of weeks ago, and he basically made the analogy that if you have a bunch of core devs just looking to do work, particularly around changing Bitcoin's consensus, it's very analogous to 
what happens in the fiat system with when you get a bunch of lawyers, they make more laws. When you get a bunch of MBAs, they make DEI, SEG, ESG type mandates that really just uh, ruin the systems that they grew out of. And I can see that argument. I, I don't think we want people working on consensus changes for the sake of consensus changes or um, ego lifts to say that they did something big in Bitcoin. But when it comes to maintenance and other things, like it is a full-blown fact. If you don't know this, like Bitcoin has a lot of things that need to be cleaned up. The conversation around um, the large consensus cleanup soft fork has been reignited, particularly by Steve Lee, which is great to see. There are many things in Bitcoin that do need to be fixed if it is going to survive uh, for a century and longer. The Unix timestamping bug is one of them that dictates that we need a hard fork at some point in the future to fix that bug. Um, and we need developers who are smart and wise being support, supported to figure out how to do that. And so there's nuance, I think. We need to work on the maintenance. We need to make sure that Bitcoin is robust, resilient, and reliable as possible, um, but we don't need to change it that much, I don't think. And I think that's the extreme conservative view that Sailor's coming from, um, but I, I don't... Part, gonna... of it, part of it should be, like, we shouldn't be reading tea leaves... Like, just ask Sailor. Just, like, have the fucking conversation in public. Um, and I, I really don't think, I, like, I think that's mostly, it's mostly a straw man. Like, 99% of developers in Bitcoin and the surrounding open source ecosystem are not working on softworks. I mean, OpenSats has 100 plus grants out. And once again, this is not about OpenSats specifically. Um, and, and none of them are softwork related. Like, oh, you know, the overwhelming majority of dev work is maintenance. And, uh, and at, I, the end of the day, at the end of the day, the one of the beauties of Bitcoin is we don't have auto updates. Yeah. Like, like you have to actually manually update your node to, to new software if you want. So devs are not in control. No, and ironically, <laughs> there's a lot of venture back startups in the space that, yeah. can only be successful if there is a soft fork. So there is some closed source development has, companies yeah. that are. 1031 more, hasn't invested in it. Yeah. yeah, we have not. But like it, putting all the, the, the cards on the table, like there are incentives in the private side and the closed source development side that, that, that are more likely to push through malicious, not malicious, but um, soft forks with unintended consequences. And if you don't, if you don't provide developers a high integrity, no strings attached path to pay their rent and live their life, they will tend to go to the low integrity options. Like we will lose many developers to the low integrity options, whether that's shit coins, whether that's quote unquote Bitcoin layer twos that are essentially just multi sigs with tokens attached, uh, whether that's the private sector with like Apple or Google or other slave tech companies. Yeah. But I, yeah, I'm, I was so happy. I was busy the day you did that. <laughs> and like a two hour in-person meeting where I didn't have my phone. Then I rolled into a three hour podcast right in person that I can touch my phone. And I can, I got dragged in a bunch of people tagging me in tweets. Like what's going on? What's going on here? I'm like, ah. yeah, I mean, it's been, it's, it's been what? Three months. I might've said four months earlier. It's been three months. Where I've just been like talking to people privately about it and just stewing on it and just it's been incredibly frustrating. It's been incredibly frustrating. And I will say, like, there is probably also an argument that you could have too much funding. I think there's like an argument, like almost like 10 year status with academia. Yes. Uh, but we are so far away from that. Like, there's not much money. <laughs> it's, it's it's you know. It's in the order of millions of dollars uh, for a trillion dollar asset class. Um, it's, 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 there's no, there's no open source contributors that are like making fucking bank doing no work. It just doesn't exist. So no, they're that, not even close to that. That's one thing to be vigilant of once you notice that there are developers that um, seem like tenured professors that are. Uh, engaging in academic circle jerking and esoteric bullshit. That's it's like, all right, let's not fuck with Bitcoin. Be vigilant. 
I like Rodolfo's framing of it. Like we need gardeners. The the protocol is yeah, always exactly. gonna need gardeners. Garden, tend to the garden. All right. Got that out of the way. On to the top four boost from Rabbit Hole Recap 299. Get on the Bitcoin train. <laughs> Hope you freaks are on the Bitcoin train. Oh, he's back. Come rocket. Come rocket. 42,069 sats. Western Mass Bitcoin Meetup, Saturday, 420, 2024, 7 to 10 p.m. at Fitz Willie's Restaurant on 23 Main Street, Northampton, Massachusetts. It's official. The Western Mass Bitcoin Meetup having party is on and is going to be epic. We have a much larger reserve space with our own private bar and bartender and our own server for food. The staff will be accepting tips via Lightning or on chain. RHR Noster page has been silent for a month. How does one find the live stream times without it? Asking for a friend. Peace and love. Episode 300. Celebration. Cheers. I'll be better about the Noster, the Noster account. Thank you, Come Rocket. How do I find out when we're doing RHR? <laughs> yeah, Logan just texted me. He's like, are we doing it at one today? I'm like, no, we're actually doing it tomorrow, Logan. Yeah, Logan, we'll also be better about <laughs> At BTC Nim boosted 26,420 sats. I just want to say the plebs have Odell's back on the sailor debate. Why does that dude go on every single podcast except yours? Lastly, where and when do you release a schedule when you guys go live? <laughs> <laughs> I guess we have to know this. Uh, I mean, on your first comments, like, we're not begging to get sailor on. You see, he's. I also free. don't like that it's like Odell versus Sailor. Like everyone wants everything to be like. You, super you, <laughs> you brought that on yourself. I mean, I think part of it is the caps. You know, like people, people, the caps really trigger people. They um, really do. I've been all caps for eight months now. Just FYI, like that's I'm not there. I'm never going low caps again. It's going to be all caps forever from from now on. So just get used to it. Um, but just like. You know, instead of talking about complete bullshit, next time you have a conversation with Sailor, like talk about important shit. Yeah. I had Sailor on our TFTC once and we just fought about ESG for two hours. The guy, yeah, because of the Bitcoin Mining Council. When was that? I think 2021, 2022. No, it was before I moved here. So, it was, yeah, I think early 2021. At Tronsington, 26,000 sats. What is the space? Find out and join us at denver.space. I think I know what the space is. It's another Bitcoin park, Bitcoin commons like working space in Denver. Great to see that pop up. Shout out to everybody involved with the space in Denver. I like the name too. Uh, yeah, it looks dope. Uh, I need to make it out there. Yeah, gosh. Eric 99, 25,000 sats. Minneapolis, Minnesota Bitcoin meetup. April 16th at O'Shaughnessy's Distillery. Starts at 6 p.m. Stay humble. Stack sats. Says next week. Great advice. Next Tuesday night. Now more than ever. Minneapolis. Go to uh, the O'Shaughnessy Distillery. And try some Keeper's Heart. Very good whiskey. Was that four? That's four. That's top four boosts from Rip 299. Thank you, freaks, for boosting, for zapping, for listening week in and week out. 300 weeks. We're actually quite not at 300 yet. I think it'll come in like a month or two. No, because we have the stimulus package episodes. Yeah. We did We did two a week during, during the stimulus package. Speaking of which, I mean... Feels like a fucking decade ago. It really does. It really does. Things aren't looking good in traditional financial markets. Man, I, yeah, I mean, I, I mentioned it briefly at the end of last week's episode, but the divergence between gold and treasuries right now, gold is breaking out. It's great to see the gold bugs have their day. They're pumped for a nice 5% pump. In the price of gold, it was over $2,400 earlier today. Oh. Right. What was that? That's all time high, right? All time high. Gold all time high. Treasuries are still dumping. 
we had a failed treasury auction <laughs> earlier this week. Uh, and something that we've been talking about for the last year, which finally materialized, the treasury has officially opened the treasury buyback window for the first time since 2001. That started this week, too. Um, so Janet Yellen and crew at the treasury foresaw a lack of demand for uh, their debt, their their shit coin, and uh, had the foresight to announce and start the process of reopening the buyback window, which is officially open. So now the treasury, I don't even know how this works, but they can buy <laughs> their own treasuries that they're in, or they buy it back from people who don't want to hold them anymore. Create demand for for their debt shit coin. Sounds like a Ponzi scheme. Yeah, inflation's still ripping. Food and uh, gas prices going up crazy. It's going on in the Middle East right before we went live. It seems like the Iron Dome was initiated in Israel to thwart off missiles coming from Iran. Uh, World War Three may be upon us, freaks. Um, but just focus. Let's get work done. Let's keep building. <laughs> Try to avoid any drafts that come your way. Uh, things are crazy out there, but we're positive here. We have Bitcoin. We have agency. We have a, a path to fix these problems. I'm not going to let the outside world dictate what we do. On to software updates. The HWI interface version 3.0.0 has been released. Nothing crazy in that release. 3.0, you think major... Version release, major release due to backwards incompatible change. Emulators will no longer be enumerated or auto-detected unless the dash dash emulators option is provided. So be aware if you're building on HWI. Core Lightning version 24.02.2 has been released. LDK version 0.0.122 has been released with bug fixes. Zeus version 0.8.3 has been released with on-chain transaction coin control for LND, improved controls for Neutrino, Peers, and more. Mutiny Wallet version 0.6.2 has been released with federated lightning addresses for Mutiny. This is pretty big. You sat down with the Mutiny boys on Citadel Dispatch earlier this week. Great, right? What, what do you have to say about this particular update? Um, fucking awesome. I mean, they specifically added Fediment support. Um, which is cool. It's like, so, I mean, I think the freaks are pretty aware of Fediment, um, but it's this idea of a multi-sig uh, e-cash mint um, where you have, you know, multiple mints and they come together. Uh, and so like, if they want to steal your money, it has to be multiple people coming together to steal your money. If they have to accidentally lose your money, it has to be multiple people fucking something up to lose your money. Um, and you have the privacy gains of Charmin eCash. Um, so you have almost perfect privacy within the mint. So if there's a thousand people, you can't tell who's, whose balances and whose transactions are among those a thousand. Um, they did cool, two interesting things with how they did this. Uh, first off, uh, there's no default mint. Um, so it's not like, so like if you load up like a wallet of Satoshi or a strike or an Albi, um, if you use that software, like there's only one custodian and like, that's the custodian you have. Um, with this, they have like a Noster, like distributed censorship resistant, like trust pilot system, basically like a web of trust. So people can leave reviews for different fediments and the user in the interface can choose which fediment they want to use. And then the second thing that's really cool is they still have all the self custody, sovereign freedom focused aspects of mutiny. So in the beginning, right, like if you're receiving a thousand sats, receiving 2000 sats or receiving 10,000 sats, you can receive that to the Fediment wallet as, as eSats, right, as eCash. And then when you start, when you hit a certain threshold, right, their minimum channel size is 100,000 sats. Um, but when you hit like 100,000 sats, 200,000 sats, and you're willing to pay your on-chain fee, then you can easily one click move it to your own sovereign lightning channel. So it, it, it graduates the user through that process. Um, and also on top of all of that, this allows them to finally add lightning address support because lightning address requires you to always be on to receive. 
Um, so you can receive into the Fediment wallet and then you can routinely sweep into your own self custody. And the beauty here is like, is this perfect? Like, no, it's like not perfect. Everything has fucking trade-offs. Um, but it's available today without a protocol change to go back to our earlier comments. Um, if you're, if you're operating under the assumption that there'll be a protocol change in Bitcoin, you're probably going to have a fucking bad time. Bitcoin is intentionally incredibly difficult to change. Um, that's a key value prop. Um, and Fediment offers a interesting tool set for people in the meantime, particularly if fees, on-chain fees, uh, go up, which I think a lot of us are expecting them to. Yes. I really love the design decisions that the Muni team has made and I get an up close and personal view of them building it. They're here in the commons, talk to them every day. They're in the office. I think they may be up at block boom right now, but it's been really cool to see them. Yeah. hundred percent. Sorry, Marty for cutting you off. Um, I see in the comments, someone bringing up Fetty versus Fediment. Fediment is the open source protocol. Uh, Fetty is a private company. Uh, Fetty, I, I believe, I believe it's, it's got to be public at this point because the Fetty apps out. It is not a false license. Um, it's, it's not a free open source software. It has, it's commercially restricted is my understanding. Um, but Mutiny is a completely false stack, uh, in terms of the front end. Um, so shout out to the Mutiny team for continuing to build out amazing open source software. Not only that, but like the... The way in which they're designing the payments and the social aspect of Bitcoin payments, really abstracting a lot of the, yeah, Venmo for Bitcoin. Yeah. Combining Lightning, Fediments, and Noster, and just making it so, because I've been playing around with a lot. I've had access to their Fediment implementation for months now, and it's really cool just receiving Bitcoin directly to the mint, not even have to think about it. What's going on with the lightning channels. I can easily switch if my balance gets um, to a point where it makes sense and just not having to think about any of that. And Fetty Mints, we've been talking about it for years. I'm incredibly bullish on them. I think the design trade-offs are really interesting and powerful if implemented the right way. And I think the mutiny guys are, are really on the tip of the spear in implementing this. And then, I, I encourage in the to listen to the dispatch. It was really fucking good. Well, on that note, I saw somebody in the comments saying that Paul mentioned Cashew was going to be implemented as well. I don't think he, he mentioned that. Oh, somebody's lying in the comments then. Shame on um, you. But Cashew is awesome too. Listen to the Cali rip on the dispatch. It was great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. I think it, it's, it's cool, right? It's like, is this idea that I've been talking about is like signal is not perfect, like as an app, um, it has specific trade-offs, right? Um, people don't like that it requires a phone number for instance, uh, but it provides pretty strong privacy guarantees and, but it's incredibly easy and clean to use. Like, like my mom uses it because that's how she gets baby pictures. Right. And it just works for her. And she doesn't, she doesn't use it because of the encryption. Uh, she doesn't use it for the privacy guarantees. And I think that's an interesting balance that Mutiny is trying to find there, which is like people will ultimately use Mutiny. The majority of people ultimately use Mutiny, not for freedom gains, not for privacy gains, but they'll use it because it's just an incredibly easy way to pay and receive money from friends. Um, and it'll have a beautiful interface. And then you get all the you get all the benefits, you get all the freedom benefits on the side of that. Yeah. Shout out to the Mutiny team. Love you guys. Phoenix Wallet, another great team in the space. Version 2.2.2 has been released with updated fee estimation for on-the-fly channels. Sparrow Wallet, another incredible team. One-man team in the space. Version 1.8.5 has been released. Whirlpool over decentralized. Soraban has been implemented, so this is big. We've been talking about uh, the Samurai team's release of the decentralized Soraban, which is important to decentralize the coordination of these coin joins, the big step for that project. And it's great to see Sparrow implement that into their project. Uh, Ronin you. UI, on the same tip, Ronin UI version 2.5.0 has been released. New troubleshooting page, Enhanced Whirlpool UI. Uh, Blue Wallet version 6.6 .6 has been released. BISC version 1.9.15 has been released with bug fixes and improvements. Blockstream Green Android version 4.0.27 in iOS version 
4.0.26 and desktop version 2.0.3 have been released. Uh, that's it for the software updates. On to announcements. Uh, Bitcoin Plus Plus, Matt lent, mentioned Bitcoin Plus Plus and Lisa earlier in the show. They will be having their Austin uh, conference on May 1st to 4th. Uh, so if you're can make it to that, highly recommend it. Lisa and crew are doing incredible things. She is fucking awesome. We're lucky to have her here in Austin. Absolute legend. We're lucky to have her working on Bitcoin. Thank you, Lisa. We are. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, Me Premier Bitcoin introduces the 2024 edition of its student workbook. For so those for those of you who are unaware what Me Premier Bitcoin is, it is an initiative in El Salvador to provide educational materials to the citizens of El Salvador who via their public education system are uh, Bitcoin is being added to that curriculum and the Bitcoin me premier Bitcoin team is basically creating that curriculum and creating the uh, materials around that. They do an incredible job. We have met some of the team personally, they're Bitcoiners to get it. They're teaching the kids what they should know, how to produce private public key pairs, how to send Bitcoin, how to do Bitcoin in a non-custodial fashion. So it's really cool to see that they're, they're iterating on these workbooks. Great project. Yes. Doing it the right way. That's all we got on the list. That's all I got right now. Love your freaks. Stay on the 